All right, let's get back to stocks for just a moment here as we see the rally resume uh, today after a little hiccup earlier in the session. Of course, it's just one session after stocks had their worst Christmas Eve on record. The Dow and the S&P both falling more than 2.5% on Monday. That prompted the president to lash out at the Fed on Twitter, tweeting, quote, the only problem our economy has is the Fed. They don't have a feel for the market. They don't understand necessary trade wars or strong dollars or even democratic shutdowns over borders. The Fed is like a powerful golfer who can't score because he has no touch. He can't putt. Joining us now is Melissa Armo, founder of the Stock Swoosh. And Melissa, I'm no golfer, but I get what the president is going for here. Um, but obviously, there's a lot more to contend with for stocks than just the Fed. Uh, as we go into 2019, what do you think the biggest obstacle to any kind of bounce or, or more substantial rally is? Well, I think there's a lot of things going on that are going to create more volatility in 2019 than we've even seen in 2018 in the market. I don't know if I'd call them obstacles, but just things that are worrying the market. One of them is rising interest rates or raising interest rates too fast. Another one is the issues that we're having with tariffs. Is that going to get resolved? Which not? And another issue also is the Mueller investigation, which is still out ongoing. Every time we hear something, Russia collusion, Russia collusion, the market sells off. Now, may recover after that. But we've seen selling from anything that has to do with the Mueller investigation as well. So I think the last week, the market did sell off when the Fed came out that they were raising rates. And even though it was expected, I think the Fed pushed back because Trump had not wanted them to raise rates in December. And I think they could have held off, but they wanted to assert their independence. And that is what they did. But, but Melissa, I understand when people get very nervous and they trade on sentiment, but nothing in what I just heard you say talked about about, you know, the value and the metrics of why people are buying certain stocks. Shouldn't people be paying attention to that now? We still expect global growth to be positive next year. Well, if you're a long-term investor and your time horizon is a long-term out, there's many stocks that are still holding the uptrend in the market. So that's fine. It's just if you are a short-term trader or if you are in retirement now or nearing retirement, I say meet with your financial planner to determine your time horizon. It has to do with your time horizon because it's not the same for everyone. My philosophy is when I look at this as an active person, I say don't buy weakness. Right now we're showing short-term weakness. Overall, the market that was bullish. So if your time horizon is long term, then I do believe the market makes brand new all time highs again. But I can't say when that's going to happen. It's way too early to predict that now. But as fast as the market fell off, it could turn around again. If any one of these things that I just pointed out actually gets resolved, then the market could have a huge, massive rally. And that's what I'm talking about volatility. Let me explain what I mean in a minute and as quickly here. Volatility really is not necessarily a sell off or a rally. Volatility is you think it's going one way and then it quickly reverses. And then you think it's going one way and then it quickly reverses. And that, I believe, is what we're going to see more of in 2019, where everyone's going to say, oh, we're falling, right. oh, we're bearish, no, we're bullish. And that's what's confusing for the general public and overall investors and even traders if they don't know what they're doing. But is the best news that the bad news isn't that bad? And if that's not the case, then how do you actually play this? I mean, what are sectors that you can get into to ride this out, Melissa? There's no play right now. There's nothing to do unless for some reason you decided you wanted to sell your positions in the last month. But if you got out in the last week, then it was a little bit late. If you really wanted to sell before the end of the year, you should have got out uh, before December 3rd. We broke the low December 4th. We broke the low and we didn't hold the gap up. After the summit, if you wanted to get out before the end of 2018, you should have got out on December 4th, that sell-off day when we gapped down. Now, as far as long-term plays, again, if you, unless you're going to be in something for the next one to five years, I wouldn't buy here because we're seeing short-term weakness. You're seeing people that are shorting the market and selling the market. Until we see institutional buying really come in in the market, I would not go back long. Now, what would that look like? It would look like a gap up. It would look like buying in the post market or the pre market in a big way. Like for example, in the in, in the diamonds in the Dow, I would say well over 230 or 23,000 in the Dow. And in the S and P, I would like to see 2,500 or 250 in the spy, something like that, where you get up overnight and we're really up. That would tell me that the big players are in, and they're not going to come in here before the end of the year. We only got a couple more trading days left before the end of the year. Yeah. So you really have to look at January and see what happens into that beginning part of the year. 
Yep, everybody's uh, probably off for the holiday still right now. So we'll see, look for those signs. Thank you so much, Melissa Armo, founder of the Stock Swoosh, uh, joining us via Skype. Thanks. Coming up, shop.